Welcome to For Love and Play. I'm matchmaker comic Yael Meisel. With me is comedians Keenan Weaver and Louis B. For Love and Play, the show about dating like a goddamn adult. We're going to discuss who to spend your time with for love or for play. Let's do it, boys. This show contains adult content for entertainment purposes. Listener discretion is advised. Not a doctor. All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening in. We're back with For Love and Play. I'm Keenan Weaver, here with my favorite people, the Queen, Yael. What's up, girl? What's going on? Happy Saturday, everybody. All right. And the Duke, Louis B. Hey, let's kick the tires and light the fires, people. Let's do this. All right. We got an excited one for you guys today. Uh, we're coming in on breakup season. Actually, mm-hmm. Louis, play the clip. Let them know what we're talking about. I'm expecting Something suddenly came up. Gone are the days of breaking someone's heart face to face. Those famous words uttered by Marsha on the Brady Bunch. Something suddenly came up. Even ridiculous strategies from Sex and the City are becoming a thing of the past. Burger broke up with me on a post-it. Now breaking up has become even more haunting. With ghosting on the rise. In our technically savvy era, ghosting is how people are calling it quits. It's when one person, out of the blue, ends a romantic relationship by cutting all contact, never to be heard from again. And the first thing I do is delete that girl's number. Guys, do not keep that number in your phone. Girls, too. What you end up doing is every now and then when you scroll through your phone, you see that name and it reminds you. And it gives you a little sting. But you know how many times I've deleted a number, a year goes by, and the girl texts you? You just text back, who dis? She's like, hey, it's me. I'm telling you, you will giggle your ass off. Let me make this clear to both sexes. If you just disappear on someone, you are a piece of sh. We're talking if you believe in ghosts. Louie, tell people how they can join in on the conversation. This is what I need you guys to do. You got a bunch of ways to get in contact with us. First, you can email us at forloveandplay at gmail. Follow us on Twitter at For Love and Play or on Facebook on our Facebook fan page. Be sure to like and share at uh, you, Facebook.com slash For Love and Play. All right. Yeah, yeah, girl. Let's jump right into this. this oh, is baby. Like... This is such a good topic. Oh, geez. Oh, this has okay. happened to me many times myself. It's happened to you. Has it happened to you, yeah, yeah? Oish. Um. Oish. I feel like it has with some important people. I, I feel like, though, one guy, like, wanted to ghost me, but couldn't. What, like, because you're such a good stalker? couldn't. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's so relevant to the dudes <laughs> like, too. Good stalking. Um, <laughs> you're horrible, Keenan. Secret no, there was There was a guy, there was a guy that I went out with a few times whatever, who is a much bigger entity of a comic than, than mm. the threat of us. And I think it was one of those where if I were anybody else, I would have been ghosted. But he's like, fuck no, I ain't going to get away with this shit. With comedian, you know, matchmaker Yael Meisel, that's just not going to fly. Mm. So he broke up with me like a gentleman. But I think I maybe, I don't, I can't recall being overtly, but I usually get an answer. I don't know. They don't They don't fall off the planet for me. I think this is one of those topics that has affected everyone, which is why ABC News was covering it. Uh, there was a fellow comedian at that clip. What was his name, Louie? Elliot Chang. Right. So he made some very good points. It, it happens because either you have ghosted another party or a party has ghosted you. Mm-hmm. And it's something that just affects all of us in some form or fashion. Um, Elliot talked about like deleting the person's number after it happens. And I'll give you a little insight onto just how my dumbass, emotionally disconnected brain works. Anytime I meet a woman, like I was, I, this happened the other day, I actually, uh, I was at the bar waiting to go on the show. And one of my female friends came up. She saw me talking, texting. She was like, oh, which one of your hoes you texting now? <laughs> and I'm like, it's a new girl. And she looks, she tries to see the name, and it's not the name. It's just the full number. Um, and she was like, oh, this is really new. And I'm like, nah, it's been like 
a month and a half new. She's like, but you didn't save her name in a phone? And I, I don't. So I don't put your name in my phone until you've earned that right. Am, am I crazy? <laughs> no. <Wow. laughs> like, for, so for Not me, I, more. Like, I don't even have to delete that number because my whole process is, yeah, you, you get numbers and then you put these names in and they, they still don't mean anything to a point. They're still just the new number. And until you actually grow and you're establishing a relationship where how it happens is organically, I'll start to remember the number based on the level of interaction. If there's one person that's just going to talk or text me every once in a while, I won't ever really remember who that is. And I always got to go back through the text. But if someone is interacting with me more often, I start to remember the last four digits and can remember the name associated with that. It's a, it's kind of like a, my phone's way of, of having its own memory. I don't know. I'm an idiot. That's so funny. Louis, mm -hmm. how do you take or handle ghosting? Have you ever ghosted someone before? Uh, no, usually it's happened to me. It's like, and it, it, and it always confuses the hell out of me because it's like, we're having a good, co we're having a good conversation. Uh, we seem to be jiving. Uh, jiving. Uh, you know, uh, vibing well, and all of a sudden, one day, you know, you, you know, no, te no return text, no call, return call, no return email, um, you know, no more, Facebook's been deactivated, and it's like, um, you know, they, they, they're just gone, and, you know, and back in the day, back in my more immature days, I used to, I, I always found a way to get a response back. And the only, <clears throat> and this, it became like a test. Like, um, you know, after, you know, I would say, hi, how you doing? Long time no talk, you know, a, a proper greeting. I wait four hours. <clears throat> And then I would have, and then I would, uh, you know, again, immature. I know everyone's going to like, oh, Louis an animal. I don't do this anymore. I'm just going to put, I'm throwing a disclaimer. I don't do this anymore. Okay. Because, because everyone likes throwing Louis down the fucking, uh, down the well when, when he says something fucked up. So I used to be like, yo, bitch, what the fuck? And magically they would, they would return the call. <laughs> I feel That's like so funny. Like, like that was that was bad, but it was nowhere near as many as those exclaimers bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh no, I said far worse. I'm not repeating it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even just saying things, I I thought you was like sending like bat signals or something. Like, I don't know what the hell you was about to do. I was I was like uh, that one at uh, one girl. I slept in the trash like Oscar Oscar the Grouch and waited for her to come out while she's coming at work. And I was like, surprise, uh, motherfucker! No, I'm just kidding. Now that did not happen. Sesame Street move. I, 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 I'm going to do the Sesame Street move. <laughs> this is terrible. Surprise, uh, motherfucker! <laughs> what you do? <laughs> Return the fucking call. <laughs> surprise. I know I you're not. That <laughs> makes you crazy. <laughs> I have diabetes, ma'am. You do not have diabetes. I, I see. To see where you were. <laughs> I just wanted to know if you're okay. <laughs> I just. Oh, need... dude, no. Oh my God, can I share a ghosting story really uh, quickly? Okay. Oh my God, recently, and it wasn't ghosting at all. I thought for sure I had been ghosted by this guy I was set up with by a matchmaker who lives in France. Mm -hmm. Um, who he's like a tech muggle. He's fucking so interesting. Mm -hmm. One of those interesting, fascinating human beings I had ever met in my entire life. He went back to Paris. He schmoozed for a little bit on Skype. Boom! Fell off the planet. Mm -hmm. Nuts. I was like, oh my god. Oh my god. Well, I mean, he's, it's, I looked at it like this. Holiday season. He just went back to Paris. Who knows? Maybe he reconnected with someone while back home. You know what I mean? Okay. God, god bless. Mm -hmm. See you later. A month and a half later, I promise you, he was in a coma. I'm not joking. Oh, I'm like, bullshit. Yeah, right. I didn't say that to him, but I'm thinking to myself, bullshit, bullshit. So I Facebook stalked him, <coughs> and he's got this whole thing in French thanking people like his parents for being by his side. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And so we basically left off a couple of weeks ago where because we had only gone on one really awesome date. Mm. And he goes back and forth. So, 
okay. Like, I, he, I were just like, you need to recover. And, you know, he's going to be back closer to the spring and we're going to reconvene and check in periodically. But, like, it, I mean, he actually did get, but how, and how sweet was that? It was the day after he got out of the hospital. He let me know that he was fine, that, like, what had happened. So this dude just mm. came to out of a coma and you were one of his first contacts. Wow. Within I think six, that is very. Waking up from a coma, yeah. Yeah, I think that's very romantic. Uh, yeah. It sounds like some type of rom com. It I is. It does, right? Because I'm thinking people's... for sure he's full of shit. This is such a lie. Like, how dare you take it there? A coma, my ass. But that brings in. Oh. That brings into one of the wor- one of the worst things about ghosting is that sometimes, and I think this is an often emotion, is when you are being ghosted and this person just drops off the face of the planet. Those emotions of what's the worst that could happen to why this person's not talking to you right come into play right and it could be i'm so narcissistic that of course this guy has to be in a coma actually i have i honestly assumed it was somebody i i honestly assumed he reconnected with someone that he you know like he met someone while he was back home yeah you know, I I, actually we have audio of that phone call between yao and the frenchman we do not <laughs> surprise motherfucker <laughs> It really is. It really is a real I'm emotion back. to to have that to to think like, okay, is something wrong? Because everything was going good. Maybe we were talking for months. We've interacted. We visited. We hung out. We've done this, that, and a mm-hmm. third. And then now it's been two, but three we days. Did not and do I haven't heard. The third. We didn't even do this and that. It was. A, I'm it was not like talking about your. I'm not talking about just your, your situation specifically. But I'm saying. That's something that can come out of the emotions is the person thinking the worst had happened, like something really bad has happened, which is why I'm not being responded to. That's a real emotion that comes out of ghosting, which is why I don't think it's the best breakup etiquette. No, it isn't. It's just not just to give a little history lesson. I don't think ghosting is necessarily new. It's it's highlighted by this technology, but. It's it was pioneered way back in the day mm-hmm. when that old sixties or seventies dad left the house to go get a pack of cigarettes and then he just never came back and left the wife and kids at home. Either I, that either that or you just send uh back in the day, you know, you would send a letter, um, the army would deliver it to your house saying that you died in action and boom, you're you're now free to date in uh so Europe. to marry this new Vietnamese chick that you met. Exactly. Well, I said so World War Two. has been around for many, 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 yeah. many years. Yeah, in fact, by, that, by no means new. Yeah, I mean, you know, the our, you know, our forefathers did it. They were like, you know what? We're I'm tired of your toothless ass here in UK. I'm gonna go to the New World and dig latrines and oh, Pocahontas. Yeah. Think of think of, think of all those women, mm-hmm. women back that husbands went on the Mayflower and mm-hmm. said, "I'm gonna write you, baby," mm-hmm. and they never got a letter. Nah. It's just uh. It's just been around for a long, long time. Yeah. But what yeah. are some breakup etiquettes that we can do? Because I feel like we're coming up on breakup season. We're, the we're, we're smack dab the in, the middle of, we're in the middle of cuffing season. Cuffing season, yes. But there's a certain type of people. There's one that will never break up with person before Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. And everybody starts to break up the week after Valentine's. Then there's a certain subset of assholes that'll break up the week before Valentine's Day because uh they realize they don't want to buy a gift for this person. Mm. Mm. So what is the right? Actually, right now, is it okay to break up with somebody before Valentine's Day? I'm yeah, asking. but it has to be yeah. done. It has to be done. If you <clears throat> break up, you break the fuck up. Mm-hmm. None of this two weeks after Valentine's Day horse shit. If you're doing it, you're doing it forever. Yeah. Seriously. <clears throat> and why, like, why why are we against the confrontation? Like what is so hard to say this is not like even if it's just a text, like if someone responds to you and you're not, and you don't want to ghost, if you're just gonna ignore them, why don't you just say this isn't working out? You gotta do it. If why you why is that karma, second text? I can I can answer so that. To do. I can answer that. Go so for it. Well, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, definitely, you're a pussy, but also, it's like, you know, a lot of times the other person just can't accept, uh, you know, the being dumped, 
So they want, they need to ask all these fucking questions. They need to know why is there something wrong with me? And you just want to move on with your life. So my question to that is then, if a person is going to not accept the first reason of the breakup, mm-hmm. do you get more messages with that approach or with the ignoring? Uh, well, it depends because now, now you got uh, advanced blocking technology. And, you know, you could, you could send, automatically send it to voicemail or just not get any text that you could block them. And, you know, you know, they're, you know, they're, um, the way, the, uh, they're, uh, migrating patterns. So you could avoid that. So, you know, it's, it's, I think it's easier to just ghost someone nowadays. I mean, it's a dickish move. And, but, you know, it's, it's to less. It seems like a lot yeah. because for, for people that are not, emotionally and technologically distant like mm-hmm. I am. Mm-hmm. Cuz I don't I don't date any women that's on my Facebook, so I don't have to go through that motion of deleting Facebook. But mm-hmm. to me it just seems like you got to go through all these extra steps to ghost cuz you got to block on Twitter, block the phone number, remove Facebook, remove right? Instagram. It's such remove a process Snapchat. nowadays. It's such a huge thing. Like that's just a lot oh, of Oh man. It's such a process. It's really, you gotta untag them and all your goddamn pictures. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, right. You gotta remove past pictures. Seriously. It's really, it's really like a divorce process. It's just yeah. ridiculous. You gotta be like, all right, who's gonna keep the pictures? Yeah. Uh, am I gonna allow to keep your name tagged on this picture? Can I keep the bear that I bought you from Build the Bear Workshop? Right. <laughs> right. Hmm. I don't. It's it's just too much. It's too big of a process. I. I don't like it. No. When when we know what we are, that's when we can be Facebook friends. That's when we can, you know what I mean? It does I, not need to be prior to that. This is slightly off topic, but I kind of, I've, I've been talking to recently a couple of people about this. So my hard set rule is you won't be on my Facebook until I put married to. What do you that's think of so that? That's so shitty. Right? I just <laughs> lied. Such an asshole. I wouldn't even go out with you. <laughs> Ladies, he's one of the most beautiful men I've ever laid eyes on in my life. Drier than the Sahara Desert. I promise you. Mm-hmm. I know. Why? No. No. You have to be in a relationship with her on Facebook. If you're in a relationship for real and you've made, and you of all people, you have made that step. Mm-mm-mm. I don't know. If you want to be on my <laughs> Facebook, you got to put a ring on it. But that's what I'm saying. Like, that shows the true, that that's, cause if you look at all the Facebook statuses, it's the in the relationship, and then it's the complicated, okay, and then it's the, ma- hold on, I'm, I'm gonna, let me, let me, let me mix this up for a second. Uh-oh. We don't even see this question coming. Boom! What if she's semi-famous? What if she's a model? Or she's like an actress? Or someone important? <laughs> Bitch, please. You're gonna be in a relationship, tagging her all over the place. If it's Susan from no, Younger, see, I'm not that's saying, not doing it. Don't even look. I'm not saying that. Hmm. I'm not saying that I wouldn't visibly show my relationship um, to somebody. I'm saying the Facebook relationship status. I am. I'm not going to go through the inner relationship and it's complicated and everything. You get put on my Facebook when we are married married to such and such and that's what that is it's not that i'm gonna hide every aspect of my relationship from facebook i'm just saying you don't deserve it until it's committed but when you're wait a second you're not gonna casually date somebody and then be like well we've casually dated now for an acceptable amount of time that's what people do. so now we shall marry <laughs> that's not how it goes no, there's, there's girls there's girls that wanted to wanted to <laughs> link on facebook after like just four dates. That's a woman. I already, I already could see how Keenan will propose to a woman. I know, right? Surprise, like, how? How? <laughs> like how? Like this? Like this? Surprise, motherfucker! There's be a lawyer's letter involved. There's, I mean, you're gonna <laughs> he, have a questionnaire at some point. <clears throat> it is. There's gonna be documents signed. I, it's, it's not gonna be sexy. If you think this guy is dropping to his knee, he's pulling out a. <clears throat> Spontaneously out of nowhere, you're out of your mind. He, that's exact. I am. A, I'm, that's the. That's the great thing about this is I, my my life is so stringent that anything else I do is spontaneous. I know it would, it would be spontaneous because it wouldn't be even expected. Yeah. Well, 
by this show in our own right, I think. We are much better people to be friends with in certain respects than to date. Like, if you'd want to date any one of the three of us, you have to want to be there. This is not going to be an on-the-fence situation. <laughs> Yo, I, I want to get back to Astrology Lady back because I recently uh, I recently <clears throat> took a personality test for some crazy show that I'm doing. And and then it, it did show, like, how whatever my, my significant other has to go through in order to really be in a relationship with me because of how distant I am up front. So the the feelings run deep, but it takes a while for you to drill down. I'm like oil. It's just yeah. Once, once you crack it, it'll I'll, I'll overflow with love, and there'll be love over ducks and everybody in the Gulf. But until then, we'll be safe. We'll be saving the wildlife. Seriously, the girl that Keenan ends up with is gonna end up looking like that dude uh, from the book Johnny Got His Gun. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Did, did, did you get the reference? I got it. I, oh, I, I got it. Yes. That was a good one. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think the whole Facebook thing is it, 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 it's just too early. I don't know. It's just too much. It's too much communication up front. You don't need all of this stuff. She could be on your MySpace. Definitely. You could be. No, the, the guy that I dated for on and off for two years that I recently broke up with, mm-hmm. we were we are only connected on one of the of the many social media of uh, uh forums and it is not facebook it is not twitter nor instagram so LinkedIn. it's one of the lesser ones you know what i'm saying like we didn't even JJ? make the big three friendster jj <laughs> no 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 not not like a j date situation i'm saying like out of all the different levels of social media from like facebook twitter Instagram, LinkedIn, all of those. Oh, Badu? Big three. You get my Snapchat. Mm-hmm. Right, so we're only linked up on one, and it's not even one of the big three. Ah. All right. I, mean, I think that's good. Mm-hmm. I tried to add him on Twitter, and I'm thinking <laughs> to myself, are, bitch, are you kidding me? Mm. You don't want to be my Twitter friend? Okay, well, well, not a problem then. Twitter or not. Nah. Mm-hmm. But that's but you gotta worry about it because it goes down in the DMs. So I've heard. I figured when he added me on the other social media site, it was then okay for me to add him on Twitter. I didn't realize we were playing chess. I didn't realize. But that's what I don't like about this thing. It's like it, each technology is like a new milestone. Like it used to be, the milestones used to just be all right. I got her number. Now we can talk. Okay, we went on a date, but now it's just so many complicated. Because now it's like, all right, the number is not a problem. Uh, you got the number. That's that's almost like the least personal thing. <laughs> There's no information that you get from a number. But if you meet on Instagram or Snapchat or Insta, like or on Twitter or Facebook, that's a lot more into your in-depth do- thoughts. A number is almost the easiest thing to give out now. Right? I was talking to this girl the other day. Uh, I'm at the bar, um, and gorgeous girl sits right next to me. I'm watching the game, so I watched the half of the game, and then when halftime came, I was like, "All right, well, I got ten minutes to kind of like get this girl's number before the game starts again." Mm-hmm. So I start talking to this chick, and she's giving hints. I'll give you two things that she she did that was was weird to me. I found out that she has a boyfriend. Right, the boyfriend was coming to pick her up, but while we were talking, she kept referring to the boyfriend as my ride. Like she would check her phone, she would be like, "I'm sorry, I'm not trying to, you know, be rude with the phone. I'm just, I got to check on my ride." And I'm like, "All right, cool, whatever, do what you got to do." So ten minutes later, the guy comes in and puts his hand on the smaller back, whatever, says hi, blah blah, blah. and then she introduces like, "This is my." boyfriend which is her ride mm-hmm. which is her ride right exactly. in, in more ways than one <laughs> why did you say you had a boyfriend while we were talking right? yeah i'm waiting then for my boyfriend said, who's my ride picking me up exactly. dumbass you could have just said that so what an asshole yeah here's, here, here's the thing though so it'd be rude for me to ask for her number for the boyfriend right? absolutely right what a waste but, of time 
Listen, it's not rude to ask for like Instagram. She had already showed me pictures of her on Instagram mm-hmm. during the conversation. I kind of got that because, you know, so she might have been having a good day. I wanted to check on Instagram to see if she's had other good days and how many of that it is. So I had already gotten. I'm like, yo, got you on Instagram. Talk later. Now we have the connection. I didn't have to ask for a number. And all of that happened right there. Pretty much in plain sight. Well, at least you know she's an asshole. Oh, you know that. that. Walking in the door. You didn't even have to spend any money. Isn't that awesome? I, I have a I have a good reason. But that's the thing. Like that's that's the thing when I talk to guys, it's like you gotta you gotta listen to key things. That there's a there's little things in conversation that if you don't pay attention to them can be very big. And that calling her boyfriend a ride, ride. <laughs> is it, it shows that fact. it shows that I had her enamored for a fourth second. That she didn't even want to mention her boyfriend until it had to be mentioned. So Louie, I think I got a shot. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you could be the side dude. And that's all I want to do. Like that's that's what yeah. I strive to be. I'm you, a great boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you are yeah, you don't have to I'm buy a great boyfriend number two. I'm the guy, I don't have to take you to dinner, but I'm there for dessert. Like, that's what you want from me. Yeah. I'm, all, I'm not there when you want me, but I can be there when you need me. I can I can commit to that. Like, you're not I, there for the Netflix. You're just there for the chill. And not even. I don't want to chill with oh you. Like, I don't, oh. like not, not at all. Oh, okay. I'm just sitting here listening to this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, well, the good news is neither one of these bitches are hitting it. So that's not that doesn't apply to me at all. Like, mm-hmm. this is just generally bad news for me. But, mm-hmm. like, I don't have to internalize it. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Internalize what you don't. Think, I'm not, it's, not, it's like it's like it's like listening. I can only imagine listening to this. It's like must be a fly in the wall at a round table with the mafia after they get off work. You okay, know what look, I mean? did, 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 did Jimmy okay. look? Did I'm Jimmy do the thing? I, I feel like more people should have their self reflection and inflection like I do, where I know I'm a great boyfriend number two, but I'm not good boyfriend material. And a lot of women need to realize that they're not marriage material as well. Hold on, hold on, Keenan. <laughs> Wait. Hell, men. Amen. Keenan. Ke- yeah, Keenan. Why don't Why don't you talk about how you date? <laughs> right now, wait, wait. That's, that's not what we, I don't even know how we got into this tangent. That's not what the topic was. I understand. I understand, but you know, I just need you to explain. Very much relevant to ghosting. Very much relevant to ghosting because yeah. it gets into why. Do people just drop connections and relationships? And I have an answer. If we want to loop it back around to ghosting, yeah, yeah, wait. I have an answer. Okay, well, when you do not respond, <laughs> hey, Peter, this gal is so great to go out with you. Blah blah blah. I'd love to see you again. And and Peter is gone. Okay, Peter's leaving the door open to contact you at a later date. That's what Peter's doing. That's what that's what this is. When there's no cutoff. To the mind of the other, in the mind of the other person, I am leaving that channel open because we did not close it out. There's no closure there. Oh. That's a, that's a good psyche to it because I have seen when doing like a little bit on this topic, I saw a couple of skits and one of them was by Elite Daily and it had the girl and the guy and everything was great up front and then he ghosted and the skit went to her friend consoling her about why the guy isn't isn't responding. And then to the end of the video, they're jogging, or she's jogging rather, and she runs into the guy. And he kind of like doesn't really remember at first, but then once he's reminded, they go into the conversation, and he asks her for dinner for Friday night. And she goes, no. I just, I just wanted to tell you to fuck off. Uh, I'm not going to dinner, and he's kind of like shot. So I'm glad you brought that up because now that makes that connection to that video of why she was worried about why he wasn't talking to her for two months. Finally, runs into which is crazy ironic. Of course, that's only going to happen in sex in a sketch because I've never ran into anybody twice like like ever. Like that just never happens anymore for some reason. I don't even understand. You used to run into your ex in the mall and everything. Like, mm-hmm. I've never seen any of my exes since. Yeah, up. because, Kimin, the way you break up, it's like, you know, you're... 
look I you know man you know we've been we've been through uh some things I, I think it's time for us to what are you, you saying Keenan I need you to I, I, I you know I, I'm just not feeling this anymore with these things what does that I got mean? look I, I just need you to to, to bounce I love you I gotta do my oh oh I'm sorry you feel that way <laughs> 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 uh, uh, first of all, I don't like how you threw in the word bounce and did that. I feel like that was a, a little racist, but uh, it's kind of accurate. You know? <laughs> yeah, bounce is just a really nicer word for leave. <laughs> I don't know. Take the take the cannolis. Leave my keys to my house. <laughs> mm-hmm. I gave up the Derek G the gift bag. Yeah. <laughs> That was that's such a great move. Sure. I wish I had. I wish I had the money to give a gift yeah, back. You, you you can. You just go to the ninety nine cent store. It's cheap. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, gotta yeah. be expensive. Here's I some. Here's some like, crackle. I, I kind of wanted to be jeterish. Like I want. I want to give a gift bag for women that I'll never see again. Where it's just a good thing that <laughs> it had this experience with me. But they also have like little souvenirs that are usable. He, he is, he is a peanut you butter. Like he, a, you get like a sample pack of Kleenex and yeah. some moist towelettes. Actually, no. The Keenan Weaver gift bag would be here's uh here's some Reese's peanut butter cups and a lotto ticket. <laughs> go so fuck a lot, yourself. A lotto ticket and a Plan B film. Yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Kill yourself. I mean, for for those who it's relevant, I could not believe this. I have not thanked the good Lord had to take a pregnancy test in a number of years. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, have to buy one. Well, I was at the dollar store the other day with the children buying something, and I noticed in line, re- <coughs> pregnancy tests are a dollar now. Yeah. Whoa, I was like, whoa, shit, whoa. I'm going to buy what? 10 of them and give them away as gifts. Are you kidding me? <coughs> They're a dollar. I could that not is... believe it. I should pick that up and take it to, like, um, you know, open mics and just give it to people. That's what I would do at a show. Like, you do that at a show? Just be like, just like to all the dates that are in the show? Mm-hmm. You just be like, you know what? I'm one of those comics that care about the people. So if you're coupled up right now, mm-hmm. there you go. <laughs> like, I have not had to buy a pregnancy test, real talk, since, I mean, anytime you go to the doctor, if you're a woman, you get a pregnancy test anyway. But I'm saying to purchase one because I thought I was pregnant. It was not since I found out I was pregnant with my children. So this is going back almost five years because they're almost four. So, but. Pregnancy tests, when I bought them, were like $13 at least, at least, and you'd get two in a pack for $13. When I saw this at the dollar store the other day, I was like angry in my heart, like I want to buy one knowing I'm not pregnant, just like I want to buy two, I'll take one, and then someone who I know is pregnant will take one, because I'm so pissed off that they're so cheap, I don't want them to be true. <laughs> I I feel like a dollar store that that just can't be accurate. Like it just it that's might why come I want to buy like two. Triplets. It would be a two dollar. It would be a two dollar investment. That is. I have to say, I'm gonna knock on wood because I've never had one of those crazy pregnancy scares. I'm knocking on wood right now. Yeah, um, in my whole in my whole life, I've never had, and it's because I'm consistent. From top to bottom, I'm consistent. I always act the same way. And my sperm is just as distant as I am. Just as, as yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason. It's the only reason. It doesn't even... It's like, hey, oh, hey, hey, I'm not ready for oh, that. No, no, no. But I'm here We just got out of here. We just got out of here, man. I'm not ready to... I'm not ready to find an egg, dog. Like, nah. I swear to God, you don't even have to wear a condom, Keenan, because your your sperm just kamikazes on the walls itself. <laughs> They're like, now nah, fuck this. <laughs> oh, shit. Sidal sperm already. Yeah, it freaking, freaking looks like freaking... <laughs> he has a baby with Keenan, it's going to be half Japanese. I'm just letting you know. Wow. <laughs> Yo. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's nice to know that I didn't say the most fucked up thing today. Yeah, I think we're going to wrap up. Good right night, everybody. Oh, jeez. <laughs> right the moral of the story, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be um, burning a cross on somebody's lawn. Wait, what? <laughs> no, I, I think the moral of the story is when, you, uh, when, you're, when you're trying to close out with someone, close it out. If you need time. If, and you and you don't know how you feel, but you you kind of need a few weeks in between. Be like, 
listen, I kind of need to sort out some stuff within my own self. Can I get back to you in a little while? If you push the issue, don't respond. But I'm saying, if you're if you're ignoring someone, what you're really doing is your passive aggressive asshole way mm-hmm. of distancing yourself without closing the situation out, which allots you mentally the freedom to return. No, it doesn't, because you're not treating the other person with respect and with communication. It's bad karma. Don't do it. Hey, what's that? Mm-hmm. Hey, Al, what you got to promote? Okie dokie. So it is going to be a happy hour on January 18th, Monday night at Climate. Six o'clock, I'm performing for Giggle Pit Comedy. Uh, check us out on Facebook, uh, me, Yael Meisel, Instagram and Twitter. Yael Meisel's on YouTube. Download, like, subscribe, follow, and keep downloading for love and play. We appreciate it. And that's all I got going on for now. Louie, what you got for the people? Yeah, yo, well, this is what I'm going to need you guys to do. Uh, follow for love and play. Uh, we're on iHeartRadio, um, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, and Podcast.com. Please rate, subscribe, and share. Uh, if you want to see me uh, perform my shenanigans, I am going to be at Broadway Comedy Club. On Wednesday, January 27th at 9.30. Uh, go- tickets are $11 when you ask for Steve and tell him you're here- there to see Louis B. Also, please follow my personal podcast, The Crotch Shot Radio Show. Also on TuneIn Radio, iTunes, uh, ah, t- iHeartRadio, and Stitcher, and also on Podcast.com. Uh, yeah, we, I, you know, I go nuts over there. So, uh, take it away, Keenan. All right, everybody knows all my information can be found on my website, www.kenanweaver, keenanweaver.com. Uh, the Bernie Sanders campaign, uh, for some reason, liked how I hosted the first debate party that they had, and they asked me back. So, Ooh. this Sunday for the Democratic debate, Keenan Weaver will be hosting another debate party again in Stanford, where, uh, coming down on primary season now it is actually 2016 so this is probably the time where most people start listening to politics Mm -hmm. Uh, come on down if you're in the area if you happen to support bernie he definitely can need your help and if you don't happen to support him come on through because i just make politics very fun on stage like it's just it's hilarious i like it a lot and people say dumb things all the time and i like pointing that out other than that you can come to my shows every sunday at what is it new york comedy club eight o'clock sunday night um you can find out why i am this way because i talk mm-hmm. a little bit more of uh of my life yep uh, and you can see why i talk this way on the way other than that everybody thanks for tuning in keep loving keep 